We thank you, Jesus, for this night. We give you praise for the word that's about to come forth. Thank you, Jesus. As worship has gone before, would you now let your presence manifest in a way we have not seen? Do something among us, Holy Spirit. We pray right now. These next moments change our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, come on, give somebody a handshake next to you. Welcome him to the house. You all can be seated. I don't know if y'all uh, see what's on my back right now. Do, do y'all know, do you know what's going on? Like, do y'all know what's happening like a couple days? Only like two days from now, actually. Like Wednesday, then there's Thursday, then there's Friday, and then Youth Conference Freedom's about to happen. Yeah, there we go. It's about to be serious, guys. Um, tonight I have a, a word specifically for parents. Who's a parent? Okay, we got two witnesses. Who's a parent? Right before we get into that, real quick, there are two awesome things that are happening very soon. Number one, the Ways Got Talent is happening. We got some people singing. We got some people dancing. We got some laughs coming. We got some cry tears coming. And that's going to be happening this upcoming Sunday, 6 o'clock. Come and support. Come and support. Be there for that. Number two thing that's happening is Father's Day. Father's Day is happening soon. Where are my fathers at? We got Daryl Strawberry. He's going to be coming. He came last year from what I heard, and it was amazing. Everybody's still talking about it. We're going to have a carnival with an actual real Ferris wheel. It's going to be there. There's going to be games. People are going to be, like, trying to throw balls and, like, knock people maybe into pools and stuff. I don't know. It's going to be awesome. If you have a really cool-looking car and you'd like to register that, come at 7 a.m. You can get that registered so everybody can look at your beautiful handiwork. Hallelujah. Amen? So uh, let's get into the Word. Joshua chapter 4, 1 through 7. Who loves the Bible? I'm going to get going here. Joshua 4, 1 through 7. When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them... Take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Pause. I want you to take it to where they're standing, but they're standing in the middle. Every time that an altar was created or built, it represented a moment where God moved and we wanted to praise him for it. God speaks to Abraham. He builds an altar because he said, this is the spot where God spoke to me. I want to praise him for that. God spoke to David and he makes an altar. He says, this is the spot. I want everyone to know this is where Jesus right here broke into my life and he did something amazing. We look at people after victory, victory in battle for Joshua, he builds an altar. Victory in battle for Caleb, builds an altar. You constantly see these altars being built as places of praise to thank God for showing up when if he did not show up, they would not have made it. I don't know if anybody in here has a story that if Jesus did not show up when he showed up, you could not have made it. There's only five people who have a story that if Jesus didn't show up when he didn't show up. So the Bible says that they had these altars, but he said this one specifically, I want you to go into the middle of the river. I want you to stop in the middle and I want you to praise me in the middle. Some of y'all know where I'm going with this. You don't wait till you're completely off of drugs to praise God. You praise him in the middle. You don't wait till your child comes home and gets saved to praise God. You praise him right now in the middle. You don't wait. The time to praise is in the middle. Because remember, Hebrews says, I want you to offer the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of your lips. You see, worship is one thing. Thanksgiving is something different. But praise... Praise only counts when it's a sacrifice. 
If you feel like praising, you should praise him anyway. But it's when you don't feel like praising him that the incense gets lit, that the fire starts burning, and it becomes a pleasing aroma to God. It's when your child is acting crazy that you need to praise him. It's when your body's feeling worse than it ever has, even though you've been praying and asking for healing, that you got to get up again and start moving and saying, oh, but I know the moment that I agreed in faith is the moment I was healed. I'm telling you, body, you're going to be, you got to praise him in the middle. It's a whole nother sermon, so let's continue. He says, I want you to carry out this pile of rocks. We're going to talk about rocks in just a second. And I want you to pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord. That's God's presence. Each of you must pick up one stone, carry it on your shoulder, 12 stones in all, one for each of the tribes of Israel. We will use these stones, listen, to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, they remind us of that day the Jordan River stopped flowing when the presence of God showed up. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel. For how long? For how long? The moment God moves in your life is not supposed to stay in that moment. It's supposed to testify through your life forever. So here's what happens. It says that the memorial was built. And he says, now listen, this is incredible wording. He says that these rocks are going to testify. He didn't say people were going to have to testify necessarily. No, 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 no. He says when they see the stones, the stones themselves are going to preach your victory. Whoa, 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 wait a second. You see, the Bible is full of all of these moments where it talks about stones. And he's speaking as if the stones have a voice. We know that stones don't have bodies. They don't have bones and blood and heartbeats, and they don't necessarily have a mouth. But I do remember Jesus himself saying, when he was walking through one day, he comes into the place, and all the people are awed. And he says, I know that you're awed, but if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Whoa, wait a second. These stones will testify and the rocks, if you do not praise, they will not be able to contain their praise. And they will praise God if you don't. You see, if we could just take a tour real quick to some rocks. Let's listen to the testimony they say. You see, rocks have a history. Stones have a story. They last a long time. Stones simply erode, but they never die. They just go into other places. They, they, they might get smaller, but they live on. See, the stones have seen the eons of time, even if you and I have it. See, if we were to go back in time, we would see a mountain. And we would say, if we don't praise him, the mountain is going to praise him. The mountain is there and would say, I remember, I have to testify about the goodness of God. And we'd say, mountain, what do you mean? And the mountain would say, there was a day that it was raining for 40 days and 40 nights. And for over an entire year, there was a boat where there was a flood that was so long and everybody died. And it, it was all wiped away. And as I was just standing here, as I do because I'm a mountain, I was just watching it all happen. But there was one day where a boat landed on top of me. And I saw a rainbow go through the sky because God was saying that never again will I ever send a flood to the earth. You see, I saw God's faithfulness. You see, the mountain would say, I saw the faithfulness of God. See, if you are quiet, the mountains will rise up and say, I've seen his faithfulness. You see, I think about Abraham and Isaac. There's an altar. 
And the Bible says that there was an altar, and the altar would stand up and say, I have to testify. People aren't saying it. They're not being a more. They're not being the example. They're not living in victory. So let me tell you how good he is. There was a day where a man came up a mountain with his son, and I remember he was crying. He was tormented. I didn't know why, but all of a sudden, the son actually did not have to be forced to get on top of me, but the son himself allowed himself to be bound. You see, it wasn't Isaac who was forced to get on that altar. Altar. The Bible and all theologians say this. They all agree. Isaac willingly wanted God's will as much as Abraham did. So Isaac, listen, put himself on the altar. He put himself in the place to please God. And the, the altar would be saying, and he laid on top of me. And I saw the father, and he was about to lift up the knife. But I saw in the distance there was a ram that was in the thicket. And right before that father put his hands on his own boy, the ram showed up because God then spoke from a cloud. And I heard the voice of my creator. I heard the voice of my creator. And he said, I am El Shaddai. I am your provider. You see, there would have been a rock that was saying on the ground, and a man named Jacob was running. He was running because he was a deceiver. He was running because he had just lied and stolen his brother's inheritance. He had tricked his own father. But see, he would have run. And the Bible says that he came to a place and he was going out of his mind, running for his life. And the Bible said God put him to sleep. He said, I want you to lay your head on the rock. And the rock would stand up and say, i got to testify. He laid his hand on me. I was the rock that he laid his head on. And when he came and he laid his head on me, he said, I don't care if anybody says this. I'm a rock and I'm going to say what I want to say. And he says, he was laying his head on me. And he said, I saw a ladder come out of heaven. And it reached down from heaven and it touched the earth. And I saw the goodness of God. And not only did I see it, I heard the voice of God. And he changed a man's name days later. I saw the faithfulness and I saw heaven. You see, if you do not praise God, the rocks will praise him for you. I think about another stone. I think about a small stone. And that stone is testifying He's saying, listen to my story. I'm like, where are you, stone? And he said, I'm in the middle of the head, the forehead of a giant. He says, I'm in the middle of the forehead of a giant. You see, when David slung that rock, it had to be going over 200 miles an hour because it split through two inches of metal. And the Bible said it sunk deep into the forehead of the giant. You see, you have to do your part. You got to let it fly. God makes it hit the mark. And it said that it hit it. It went through two inches of metal. You see, the rock's testifying. He's like, I'm actually still here. I'm embedded in this head right now. And I say, where are you, head? And it said, well, I saw a young boy pick me up from a brook. He flew me into the head of a giant. I'm still here. Where are you? Well, listen, it said David cut off the head of Goliath. And we don't know that. But I went to Israel and I found out that it didn't just cut his head off. He carried it over 22 miles away to a city. And he put the head under a hill that looked like a skull. The hill is called Golgotha. In other words, the head of the enemy of God was under the rock and the hill that the cross of Jesus Christ was over. Because Jesus wants you to know, and the testifying of this stone says... I saw the cross. I saw the Savior. Because the cross will always be victorious over your worst enemies. The enemy is under my feet. The enemy is under my feet. The enemy is... I don't know if I got anybody helping me tonight. I said the enemy is under my feet. Your feet, single mom. Your feet, single dad. Your feet, teenager. I see one last stone. I 
I hear a stone saying, I want to testify. I, oh, okay. Your turn. Go ahead. What do you want to say? The stone says, I was in the front of a gaping hole in the side of a cliff. And I saw a dead body that was sitting on the inside. And if nobody wants to tell this story, I'm a rock and I'm going to say what I want to say. And one day, that body began to move. It was wrapped in clothes, but it began to shake. It had been dead for three days. And that body began to move, and that body began to shake, and someone stood up, and his name was Jesus. I got to see the Son of God. And then... And it wasn't a man who pushed me and rolled me out of the way because I'm way too heavy for any man to roll me out of the way. It wasn't anything. Matter of fact, I wasn't rolled out of the way so that Jesus could get out because he didn't need my help. I was rolled out of the way so every person can come and see that Jesus was not there anymore. <laughs> Stones. Testify. Psalm 92, 12 through 15. The righteous will flourish. Look at what Jesus says about you. Stones, memorials. Watch this. They're not alive, but they testify. The righteous will flourish like the date palm. Long lived upright and useful. Pause. Do you know Jesus calls you a palm tree? He doesn't call every Christian a palm tree. He calls those who are planted palm trees. So you got to understand something. Planted does not mean you sit in a seat. Planted means, biblically, you are fully committed in your vision with the vision of that house. You are fully committed with your time and the service of that house. And you are fully committed with the money that you make in that house. Now, see, listen, I'm speaking to planted people right now. He calls you a palm tree. You know why that's exciting me? Because let me tell you why. There's three things about the palm tree you need to know. God didn't just call you a palm tree because he could have called you any tree. He calls you it on purpose. You should find out why. Number one, a palm tree bends, but you can't break it. It will bend, but it will not break. You see, persecution, things will come to you. You're going to see some stuff your children are going to do that are going to make you lose your mind. You're going to say, Lord God Almighty, why? It, teenager, raising a teenager should be like a double full-time job. You might be one day be like, oh my gosh, I just, we're never going to speak the same language. You're bowing over, but I want you to know God created you resilient. You don't have to stay down because when the palm tree and the storm ends, the palm tree bounces back. Some of y'all are about to bounce back. If you'll call out to the Lord, you're not going to stay down. You're not going to stay beaten. You're about to bounce Number two, you can cut the palm tree down, but it still won't die. <laughs> Woo! I don't know here who has been told, what are you doing being a mother? If I was raising those kids, I would plot. I don't, wait, oh, you're all by yourself now. Man, you know what you should have done. I don't know if you've ever felt cut by the words of people as a single mom or as a mother or a house or a father. I don't know if anybody's ever tried to cut you down. It, because remember, words cut. Sticks and stones that break my bones, but words that never hurt me. Rubbish! Words destroy people. But I just want you to know, I don't care what curse came and cut you down. It was only for a matter of time because you're growing back again. You're growing back again. You're not going to stay down, Mom. You're not going to stay down, Dad. I want you to know God's still there. He's faithful. 
The rocks will tell you about it. Number three, I got to move on. Number three, the stronger the storm, the thicker the roots get. The, f the harder the palm tree has to fight to stay up, the stronger it's getting where it counts. The stronger it's getting where nobody's looking. The stronger it's getting where nobody sees. You see, you can try to fight me. You can send every curse my way. The devil can try to fight me. You can try to do anything you want, but I'm just going to come back stronger. I'm just going to come back with more resilience. I'm just going to come back saying, come on, bring it on. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent man or woman takes it by... You're a palm tree. Watch this. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted, planted in the house of the Lord. They'll flourish in the courts of their God. Growing in grace. Here we go. They will still thrive, bear fruit, and prosper even in old age. Some of y'all retired from your jobs, but you also retired from life. That was a mistake. You retire from your job so you can be a full-time minister. And here's the deal. If you have a job, you need to make it your ministry. They will flourish and be vital and fresh. Oh, I like these words about you. Rich in trust and love and commitment. Here we go. Listen to these words. They are living memorials to declare that the Lord is upright. He's faithful to his promises. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Listen, there is a moment. The rocks had their turn. But now Jesus looks at you and says, I want you to be a living memorial. Every parent in this place, please understand something. The victories God has won in your life, the things God has brought you through. If we were to get many of you up on this stage and ask you your story, I'm sure we'd be standing up on our feet praising God all night because of what the Lord has done for testimony after testimony, the testimony after testimony. But please understand something. Your life now is supposed to declare the victory every single day. Your life is supposed to declare to your children and your teenager, God still works miracles. Your life, you know why? Because you're not depressed anymore. Your life, you know why? Because you're not suffering anymore. Your life, you know why? It's because you're not addicted anymore. Why are they gonna hope to be unaddicted? Why are they gonna hope to not be depressed? Because you are shouting with your life, look what God did. Look what God did. Look what God did. Honey, I know you're going through it right now, baby. But I got to tell you, I went through the same thing. And look at what God did. If you don't love the house of God, why would they? If you are walking around depressed and beaten and hopeless and defeated, what are they looking at and why would they want what you have? We're supposed to be shouting. The rocks already had their turn. It's time for us to declare, I remember when I was 15, baby, and I went to this time and I thought I found the love of my life, but he was all wrong for me. Let me tell you about it, baby. I went through, I thought, man, this is the one for me. But oh, dear God, was I wrong. Let me tell you a lesson, babe. You should be praising God for not just the doors that open for you, but the doors that close. When's the last time you praised God for a closed door? I want to speak to the moms real quick. If you try to carry the burden of your children, which you cannot help to a certain degree, but you try to carry it on your own without the help of God, let me tell you something. This is all you need. Mother, you don't have to know the entire Bible. 
You don't have to know how to preach a great sermon. I, you don't. It's awesome if you do, but you don't have to. You don't have to know how to know exactly the moment when to say something. You don't have to have all the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost flow in your life at every single moment. You know what you need? You need to get the next victory for yourself. You need to get a victory. You need to get over the depression. You need to let God help you. You need to get through that addiction. You need to let God break you free tonight. You need to get through that struggle. You need a victory under your belt. Why? Because the victories will preach all of it for you. The victory will preach to your children. You see, listen. We are trying to preach so much to our teenagers. But sometimes you need to just be quiet and stop preaching at them. And show them what victory looks like. Show them what joy looks like. Show them what hope looks like. Show them what passion for the house of God looks like. Show them. Play that music, please, from the back. Thank you. You see, the word memorial comes from a word memory. A memory. To be a living memorial means you have memories. Memories of moments God moved. <laughs> memories. There's memories all filling this building of moments that Jesus came in. He broke through. He was faithful. He gave you victory. There was one woman the Bible talks about, and now we're about to pray. This is the moment that I've been praying about right now for every person in this building. The Bible says there was a woman. She was a prostitute. She came in an alabaster box full of perfume, a year's worth of wages. The Bible said that she came, she broke it, she poured it over the head of Jesus. Listen, the head of Jesus and flowed through his beard, down his clothes. The other disciples got upset and said, that's so wasteful. What are you doing? And Jesus said, be quiet. This woman has loved me so well, she gave it all. And the memory of her story will be told for the rest of time by every preacher, by every minister, by every person who preaches this gospel, her memory. She became a living memorial because she gave it all. You see, what you might not understand is the Bible is very clear. Jesus did not go anywhere from that place except the Garden of Gethsemane. He went from the house to the table of the Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible's very, very strategic and very particular about following his movements. Why is this important? Jesus didn't go home and take a shower. You know why? Because in the moments when he would be in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was crying out, and he was praying, oh, Father, if it's possible, could you take this cup from me? And when he bowed down and said, oh, could you take it from me? He... The aroma of that perfume, of a memory, of a life that gave it all. He breathed and he said, oh God, but I'll go. Because somebody was worthy. Somebody was willing to give it all. When they picked him up and they beat him in the face. And he was going back and forth and he was, the pain. He came down, beat in the face, beat us and were questioning him. He went, but Lord, I'll keep going for the joy said before because somebody was willing to give it all. When they were stripping him in his back, when they whipped him every lash, he's crying out, don't you know that he wanted to stop? But it was in his skin. A life that gave it all was in his beard. A life that gave it all was in his body, was everywhere and marked him. A woman who is a living memorial. It's a memory. Will you as a parent surrender your life again tonight? 
Not necessarily getting saved. If you aren't saved, you need to do that. But saying, I want to be that living memorial. You see, guilt and shame has been hurting a lot of you parents. You're so under guilt because you think you're such a failure. That you're missing out on the life of your teenager or your children. I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm not saying you're perfect. I know there's things that are going on that I don't know about. But I know this. You need some victories. This is what I'm going to ask to happen. I want every single teenager from right here. I want you to stand up. Stand up right now, teenagers. And I want you to come right here. And I want you one person at a time to line up right in the front, all the way along the front, along that wall. And if there's anyone more, they'll go that direction. But pick a spot right here. And I want you to face out toward the crowd. Go all the way down, please. All the way down. on going. Get as close as you can to each other. Face out in the crowd. Keep going. If you need to extend that way, let them extend that way. If you need to go all the way down, thank you. Continue to move. Now listen to me, every person as they're getting in place, every person looking up here. What's about to happen is going to be precious. If you are the parent of one of these teenagers, I need you to stand up and I need you to come right now and stand next to them right up here, right now. Father and mother, mother, one parent, two parents, find your teenager, come and stand over here. Look all over. Now this is what I want to do. Church, youth altar team, altar team from our church. As the parents are getting in place, this is what I want to do. If you do not see Someone, this is not for everybody. This is youth altar team, altar team from the church, leaders. I want you to stand in the gap if one person here does not have a parent. I want you to say, I'll be there. Ladies, I'd like you to find a young girl. If she's standing by herself. I want you to be your mama tonight. Young men, I want you to find, man, I want you to find young men if they're standing by themselves. These are approved people. Let nobody be by themselves right now. can feel your spirit somewhere out there. You don't have your kids here. But they're going to come. They're going to come. People are still organizing. This is what we're going to do. If you are standing there with your child, whether it be your son or daughter, this is where we're going to have to dig deep. Either this is a defining moment for your life, parents, or it's not. You're the one who gets to make that decision. But the Spirit of God is here. He's available. He wants to do a powerful work. This is what's about to happen. Parents, I want you to make the first move. I don't know everything that's going on in your house. I don't know how stubborn you feel your, your teenager has been. I don't know how great they are. I don't know anything, but I know God wants to make you a living memorial. And this is what you need. You need their prayers. You need their strength. So this is what you're going to do. As parents right now, I want you to take one moment. And if there's anything you know that you need to apologize for, repent for this is an atmosphere of humility it doesn't matter if they respond the right way none of that between you and god you want to testify with your life i want you to humble yourself and i want you right now to repent right now 
right now. Turn that music up. I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry, honey. I'm so sorry. I want you to mean it from your heart. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at people right now. I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry I yelled at you. I'm sorry these things have happened. I know that I failed. I know that I, I know that I haven't. Look at this right now. God is now molding. He's bringing hearts together. Come on. Don't humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Thank you, God. You're there for him. He's there for you. He's there for you. She's there for you. A few more seconds I want you to say. Now, kids, I want you to do this. I want you to look him back in the face, and I want you to say, I forgive you. Look at him. Say it. I forgive you, Dad. I forgive you, Mom. We are in the presence of God right now. This is not a normal moment. I forgive you, Mom. Now, I know there's going to have to be more conversation. I know that some of these wounds go deep. I understand. But this is what I want you to do, teenager. I want you to repent to your parents right now for what you know of, for what you know of right now that's on your heart. Dad, I'm really sorry. Like, uh, Mom, be sincere. God is watching right now. He loves you. This is a moment for reconciliation. No judgment from you parents. This is not a moment for anger. This is not a moment for anything. Accept it. We can't move on until there is a sense of peace. If you're standing with a child that's not your own, but you're standing in, I want you right now to just take their hand in your hand. Take both of their hands. If you're standing with somebody who's not your own child, but you're standing in, I want you to take both their hands. Here we go. This is the moment. This is the moment. You see, you all came tonight because you wanted to know and be a part of praying for your kids as they go into youth conference. We're going to do that. But here's what's going to happen first. Every teenager in this place, I am imploring you, lay hands on the chest of your father. Lay hands on the shoulder of your mother right now. Lay hands on them. And mothers and fathers, I want you to be silent. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you, teenager, to pour out your prayers of strength into your parents right now. I want you to pray for them. I want you to say, you are strong. You will get through this, mom. You will get through this, dad. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, teenagers, begin to pray in the Spirit. If you don't pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in English. Thank you, Jesus. I pray strength into you, mom. I pray strength into you. You're going to do this. I know it, dad. Dad, you can do this. You can get through this. I know you can. Come on, teenagers. Pray for your parents. They need you. They need you. Pray, pray out loud. Come on, bold. Don't be afraid. This isn't a moment to be afraid. Don't worry about what's being judged. Let it out. I love you, Mom. Tell them I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. If that's all you got, just say I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. Thank you, Jesus. God, what's happening up here right now? Pray over your parents. Say you can be a living memorial, Mom. I know you can. I know you're going to get victory, Mom. I know it's been hard. Just say, I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. I might not know all the words to say. You don't have to know all the words. I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. I'm there for you. I'm with you. Come on, just tell him I love you. You don't know how much we need your strength. You don't know how much we need your love as children. It matters what you think of us. We care for you. 
feel the Spirit of God beginning to break right now. He's beginning to break. I feel the hearts of young children. I feel teenagers. There are people all over here. I see you, 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 you. The hearts are being reconnected right now. Do you understand what is happening before your eyes, church? There is a connection literally happening between mothers and fathers and children right now. A barrier has been up for so long between some of these teenagers and their parents. But right now, God is beginning to mend something. He's beginning to do something beautiful that only the Lord could do in a moment like this. My God, my God, my God. Just a couple more seconds. Okay, parents, if you can dry up your tears, get your snot out of the way, it's time to pray over your teenagers. It's time to pray and war for them. They're about to go into a youth conference that is about freedom. We are approaching freedom. Breakthrough of freedom. Friday night, Saturday all day, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Freedom is breaking free. I need you to pray right now. Pray, pray for them, pray for them. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Shikara pray perfect prayers. If you don't have a prayer language, pray in English. I'm praying for your son. Jesus, I strengthen him by the power of your spirit. I thank you, God, he's going to get victory. Don't tell him what they need. Don't tell him anything specific. Just pray victory. Pray strength right now. So you're going to have it. Son, I know it. I believe in you. I believe in you. Whatever God wants to tell you, come on. Don't they? Whatever God wants to tell you, you're going to leave. You're going to hear it. You're going to have an encounter. Come on, pray for an encounter. Pray for a tangible encounter. You know that you needed an encounter. You know that you needed God to show up for you. You know that you needed God to become real. Come on, pray for them. Every one of you parents had a moment like this. They need a moment. They need a divine encounter. They need a moment. Pray, pray. agreement right now we have peace son we have peace I'm not angry at you I have no judgment on you God's gonna work out what we need to talk about God's gonna help us with that but I want you to go into conference with freedom I want you to go in with strength I want you to know that a divine moment is about to happen in your life I want you to know that this won't just be a normal weekend for you son this one's not gonna be a normal weekend for your daughter you're about to encounter Jesus I'm praying you encounter the face of God I'm praying you for what just happened and what's about to happen. I need you to praise God ahead of time for what's about to happen this weekend. I need you to praise God. I need you to know this is going to, this is the house of God. This altar is about to set free hundreds and hundreds of young people who are fighting things that only if God shows up will they get free. Let's give a praise in the middle right now. Let's give a praise before it happens. I want you to give a praise. I want you to give a praise before it happens, before it happens, before.
every person standing to their feet, lift your hands in the air. I'm going to send you out with a prayer in just a moment. Every person be sensitive to this atmosphere right now. The Spirit of God is here. If you say, I do not know Jesus, you do not want to be in this atmosphere one moment longer without knowing personally your Savior, Jesus. You want to have peace with God. I need you to wave your hand in the air. I want Jesus right now. Wave it. I see you. 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 Look at all these people right now. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I see you right now. Wow. Wow. Keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. Every single person. We're going to do something a little different because the altars are filled. I'm going to pray for you right there in your seat. I want everybody to repeat these words after me right now. If you waved your hand right now and said, I want Jesus, I need you to know specifically. Right now, I need you to pray this prayer. Everybody out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as Savior. I receive you as Lord. I thank you, God, for taking your blood, shedding it for me so that I could be saved. I will no longer be the same. I hand over my life to you. I give you full control. And in Jesus' name, you're my master. You're my boss. I will become a disciple. I will become a disciple. I won't just stop here. I'm going to take the next step. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him a hand. Now listen, every single one of you, listen to me. Listen, every single one of you, just lifted your hand you need to get baptized in water you need to know what it means to begin your journey you need to go out to the foyer sign up with discipleship and say I'm going to take the next step I want everybody to give one last hand for Jesus tonight listen please we are sending these children off these teenagers into a youth conference I want to tell you something on Sunday morning God has given me a specific prophetic word for this church. I never say that word often at all. But for families right now, please do not miss Sunday morning, 9 and 11 o'clock. I'm going to give a word for your family that has come over the entire church. And you'll be very, very blessed. God bless every single one of you. Do not forget, on Sunday night, we have the Ways Got Talent. On Father's Day, the 18th, we have that. Thank you all so much for coming. Pastor Marco will be here with a special announcement and message as well during offering. And so Pastor Marco is coming back as well. You'll see him. God bless you all. God bless you all.